Okay, now I want to talk about 21 centimeter radiation. It's called the hyperfine transition. So, imagine we have a hydrogen atom with a proton, the electron orbiting this proton. Both proton and electron have a spin. So, say if I have this proton spin like this. The state of the electron could be spinning up like this or spinning down. When the electron and proton in a parallel spin and this is in the anti-parallel spin, they have energy E say E2 and this have energy say E1. E2 is larger than E1 and the difference between them is about 6 times 10 to minus 6 electron volt. If uh, an electron have a transition from parallel to anti-parallel spin, so if this transition, they will emit a photon with frequency f the frequency of this photon is related to the energy the difference of energy between those state so we have delta e is h h is a uh, Planck constant times the frequency of the photon and using this energy we have a frequency of about 1.4 gigahertz or wavelength that is c over f with c is the speed of the light is about 21 centimeters so, if there is a transition, hyperfine transition in neutral hydrogen or H1 from a parallel spin to antiparallel spin, then they emit a photon with wavelength of 21 centimeters. We have talked about the parallel state that is have energy e2 this is the level energy of the parallel state and this is the e1 is the energy levels of anti-parallel state which is lower than e2 f difference delta e so say i have electron in the parallel state what is the probability of this electron to make a transition to antiparallel state? The probability is defined by the Einstein coefficient, which is symbol A, and have subscripts to 1, so makes a defined transition between level 2 to level 1. For hyperfine transition of neutral hydrogen, the value of Einstein coefficient I A to 1 is about 10 to minus 15 per second. So this have a characteristic time we can estimate as 1 over Einstein coefficient and it's about 10 to 7 years. So spontaneous transition of hyperfine level in atomic hydrogen is has a very very long characteristic time. Okay, now I want to talk about the spin temperatures. So spin temperatures describe the ratio of atoms 
in excited state or in parallel states with energy level E2 to the unexcited states or anti-parallel states with energy level E1. So if I'm using a Boltzmann equation, the number of electron, the number density of electrons in energy level E2 is N2 and the number of electrons in energy levels 1 is N1 so the ratio between N2 and N1 is given by G2 over G1 G is the statistical weight of the atom in that states so for hyperfine transition g2 over g1 is 3 and this is exponent of minus h nu over kt nu here is a frequency and t here is a spin temperatures Again, H is a Planck constant and T is a Boltzmann constant. So basically, in this equation, spin temperatures governs the ratio of the, the, the atoms on the excited states to the lower states. There are three processes that determine the population of the hyperfine levels. First is collision between atoms. So the collision between atoms described by the kinetic temperatures of the atoms. The second is the radiation of 21 centimeters, which is characterized by the radiation temperatures. And the last thing is radiation in Lyman alpha this is radiation between the transition of the electronic levels of atomic hydrogen so this is characterized by Lyman temperatures the spin temperatures is the 21 centimeter radiation temperatures plus a coefficients times kinetic temperatures and coefficient again times the Lyman alpha temperatures divide by 1 plus h coefficient these two coefficients determine the relative efficiency of the process so say if the collision between atoms is dominant then the y c between becomes large so if this is not dominant, so this has become less. After many interaction, the spin temperatures becomes thermal temperatures. The last thing I want to talk is about H1 column density. The symbol is NH. The definition of H1 column density is the number of neutral hydrogen per unit area say unit area is centimeter square of the line of sight so say I'm observing a huge cloud of H1 this is me here and this is the line of sight which is strike line of course between the observer and the hydrogen cloud and if I have this column which is parallel to the line of sight but has the area of one centimeter square the NH or H1 column density is the number of atomic hydrogen in this region so what I measure in my instrument is this like this this is the velocity 
kilometer per second and this, this is the intensity of the of the signals I have signals like this approximately there's a absorption line caused by this clouds and to calculate the H1 column density I can use this simple equation TS here is a spin temperatures measured in Kelvin and tau here is optical depth which is simply the ratio between say optical depth in this frequency it's just the ratio of the intensity is this in this point with the intensity in this point so this is I accent and this is I so at velocity V at velocity V so optical depth at velocity V is just the ratio and I integrate the optical depth over all velocity because the frequency has been changed to velocity in kilometer per second so basically what I'm doing in that integral is measure the area of this absorption line then I get the H1 column density if I can approximate this line as a Gaussian line it's a Gaussian profile like this is a Gaussian with a maximum optical depth so this is the maximum optical depth here this tau naught and the full half maximum width so if this intensity here is I and I have intensity here is I half of the intensity here So this is the full width of half maximum. This is the full width of half maximum delta V. So I can approximate this. If Gaussian, I can approximate this equation with same, almost the same, but this is tau naught. And this is the full width half maximum.